There's so much to say. Time is, you know, a dictator. Uh, by the way, the one on the right uh, is me after the flight. Okay, you, you can see my, the, the effect of four hours of sleep. Okay, so time is not enough. I'll, I'll just hint. Uh, it's a flexible, fluid, uh, liquid presentation. So if I if we run out of time, I'll, I'll just keep some selected slide. Okay, so don't be. I, I won't show you the number of slides because you will, you will get scared and probably run away. So don't don't worry. Okay, I'll, I'll try to be uh, flexible, and we we skip. Uh, uh, we skip just in case, okay? So we, we are in the present situation, if you think about it, okay? There, there are all these new and cool technologies, okay? Also, I mentioned a few possibilities of artificial intelligence and so on. And we are similar in a, in a similar situation to what Arthur Clarke, a famous uh, uh, writer, okay? Wrote, actually, a uh, long time ago. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, okay? So we are in this situation here. It's the Harry Techno Potter situation. No. So we all have to trust whatever the magicians of the new technologies are doing because it, it's no, we, we don't really know what they're doing, but it's magic, okay? And so we like magic, we love magic. Uh, maybe part of the magic is buzzwords, maybe not, okay? But so uh, this is all wrong, actually. So this is all wrong because what we really need today, very short, as I told you, only 30 minutes, is a tango lesson, okay? Uh, we will just start a tango lesson because what's actually happening in the realm of uh, technology is a tango. Because the, the biggest error that people can do is just up here, thinking that there is this magic technology, okay, we, but we need to trust. And for instance, we put AI, and we're cool by definition, just because we use AI, okay, but there's a concern. No. We heard about this, because oh, this, this, uh, all these bloggers are not using yet AI. Yeah, but it's not that using AI makes you cool, okay? So we, we will see, just because it's a tango, actually, be, be, between two actors, two players, technology and society. Because it's society who's using technology. It's you. You are using the technology, okay? So there's no single actor here. It's two actors. It's a tango. Okay, just to show you the, the impact, okay? We, we could talk a lot about the impact, but just to show you a very simple example. So do, do you think we are evolving? Are we evolving because we are better? We have smartphones, we have all these new cool technologies. Okay, yes, we, we're nearing the Star Trek uh, dream. No, uh, Star Trek, where we, we could do all these great things. It, it looks like science fiction, if you think about it. Okay, it's almost science fiction to some extent. Great, okay. So what I would really love to have is a time machine. Okay, if I had a time machine, I would go not in the future, but in the past. Okay, because think, you go in the past, you bring someone from the past to show them all the beautiful things we have nowadays. Okay, so for instance, we could do this, we could go far back in time, uh, 2,000 years ago, we go back to the Roman Empire, we pick up a family and we tell them, come, have a look. 2,000 years later, we will show you all the beautiful things we have. Okay, so we go there, we pick the Roman family. They're all curious of what, what the world, the wonderful world will be in 2,000 years from now. And that's where they land. <laughs> they land here, right? So this is the new world, the new magic world of technology in uh, Annus Dominus 2024. Okay, well, uh, and so can you imagine the reaction of the, of the Roman family? So is this progress? Are we, uh, did we really evolve as a society or there's something wrong, okay? And even worse, imagine their faces when you are going to show them this thing here. <laughs> <laughs> so we, they had plain roads, right? And we, we make plain roads, but we put the bumps. <laughs> we put bumps on the road. The, how, how do you explain it to the Roman family, okay? But so, Obviously, there is some sense. No, yes, we know why we need, we need to, to do this crazy thing, but it's crazy if you think about it. We're putting bumps on straight roads, okay? It's crazy, but we know that there is something, there is, okay, maybe it's, there are better solutions. There are, by the way, rather than bumps, but there is a sense. The sense is the tangle between technology and society, because this thing here, technologically, doesn't make any sense to do a straight road and then you put the bumps. Just, it's not bumps that go down, but bumps that go up. Okay, but it's, it's, it's totally crazy. So it's not a technological thing here. This is the impact, the, the melting, 
the tango between technology and society, okay? And here you can see. So it's not really an evolution because our path is kind of strange unless you know where to look after, okay? So brief tango lesson, okay? This is wrong, as I told you. So we, we, we need a kind of chamber of secrets mm, to get into and find what, 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 whether there are some rules, some uh, guidelines, whatever, okay? So the best, uh, tool that we have to open the Chamber of Secrets, okay, there's the, the basilisk, okay, the, the corresponding basilisk is this thing here, okay, it's the most caring thing I'm aware of, okay. <laughs> I go to many presentations, I met Prime Ministers, European Commission, Michael, even, okay, but <laughs> the, the very single moment where I've been most scared in my lifetime, it's been when I had the disgraceful idea to go to a secondary school. Okay, it, it, because you know, it's great to bring the high technology views to, okay. And these kids there started to do something that we forgot to do, mostly. Asking why. We forget to ask why. Because after we grow up and the kid in us kind of sleeping, is sleeping now. Because the world is like this, okay. We, we forget. But I didn't forget and I was completely scared. After two, three whys in sequence, I was starting, you know, sweating, like, oh, wow, okay, so still, I remember it a few years ago, this is the, the most caring, okay, thing that ever happened in my life, but it's a powerful concept, the why, okay, the why, why this is happening, so Google, okay, let's, let's start a very quick road, so uh, we can see why some technology maybe succeeded, and why some technologies failed, okay, and from this, maybe we can understand how the future technologies are impacting our society, whether some technologies are Better or worse, okay, for us. So Google starts, okay, it's the 90s, late 2000, and rapidly becomes the king of the web and of the internet, okay, the king. And then this guy arrives here. So now we all know Facebook, okay, but at the time, because always focus on what happened at the time, to understand what can happen today, okay. At the time, people were just laughing at Facebook. People were laughing at Facebook. Because what's, what's about this? You put your picture, you can read what other people write. So what, what, what is this compared to the magic of Google? The oracle that can give you answer. Okay, so all of the experts and the media press and so on all the time laugh at Facebook, okay? And then we know what happened in the clash. Okay, it, it looks like a skewed, unbalanced situation because the monster Google is facing this crazy little thing called Facebook and then eventually something happens, okay? 2010. Huh? Okay, Facebook mm, grows bigger than Google in terms of user. So from 2010 onwards, the social, uh, social era starts. Okay, but this is, looks completely strange. So why, why did this happen? Okay, and with crushing proportion nowadays, Google is going crazy. Google lost the social world. Okay, so what, what, whatever happened that made Facebook so successful? Okay, but, there are a number of factors, but there are two main factors, okay? which is actually one uh, later on, if we have time, we can follow up. It's the same kind of factors, but we can find in other media. This is the Big Brother uh, TV series. No, again, look at what the media experts were saying when the Big Brother uh, show was actually introduced 24 years ago, in year 2000, in the UK, for instance. People laughing, because what, what? I have to waste the time of my life to look at a, a strange uh, room, a strange house, where people are doing their own business. And do you think I'm going to waste my time doing this? So crazy. So all of the experts say, this is crazy, a stupid idea, no, nobody will watch it. Okay, big audiences. 24 years of broadcasting. Okay, so the same happens to Facebook. The same principle, because these are the pulsion, the heartbeats or what people love to do on Facebook, okay? And there's various actions that you can do on Facebook. No? You can read uh, what, what your friends or other people are saying, you can write things, okay? There are many pulsions, many things that you can do. But one thing here, the green one, as you can see, is the number one thing, which means people really love this in Facebook, not so much the other. And this big green line here, you know what it is? To look into the people. People look at the images. It's not reading what other people are writing. 
He's not writing what you think. He's just watching images. Okay, so that, that was the primary pulsion, okay, but, but, but people actually experienced in this new uh, word, okay, called Facebook, I, okay, and, and that's been one of the recipes of uh, success, and then also other recipes, because as you know, the great things of Facebook and, and also of the other social media is that you can go viral, no? The great thing, you, you put a post, it goes viral, and boom, you, you hit jackpot, okay, and so something happened, okay, that made this social so powerful. I have a short clip that I'm going to show you, okay? Uh, sorry for the quality of the audio, but it's the original clip from 2004, okay? It's a minute, I don't have time, but it's worth, okay? It's worth, I think, because it, it can, you know, uh, make you understand maybe better. So, let's have a look at this clip. <laughs> Hello. Because it could go on and on and on, as you can understand. It's finished. Peso, says Bull, Jesse, Marco, Hala. Okay, and so no, no. <laughs> and he stopped it. No, okay, he, he stopped it. So this is the, you might wonder what it is. It's the first big viral video in the history of humanity. Okay, the, the number one, the seed. Everything started from here. YouTube wasn't even there. So it's a world where there's not yet YouTube. Still, this video goes viral. Over 7,000 visualizations. Okay, growing and growing. It was the first video ever that went to ICU. Yes, the big viral video, first video ever. Okay, and then people not only started, you know, uh, sharing it, but they also started replicating it. Okay. It's a compilation from all over the world. Mexico, Germany, Spain, Argentina, uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, Italy, uh, everywhere in the world, everywhere. The big planetary hit of the time. Okay. And you might wonder, okay, so okay, wh why did this video go viral? Is, is it an informative video? Did you learn something more? Do, do you feel empowered? Because now I know more than I knew yesterday after but no, obviously there's something else. No. So can, can you understand? This is not Google. It's not Google. Google is the librarian who is showing you the books, who is telling you, you need to learn more. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. This is us. This is us. Okay, this is us. Because what we need most, and the biggest thing that makes things viral, it's the emotions. It's not the content at all. As caring as it looks now, because are we really this? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But, but it's fun also, right? Because this is more fun than a book. Right, the emotions. And actually, okay, there are many emotions, but behave differently, okay? If, if, you, if you are curious about the top three. Number one, fun. A funny thing, the best that you can have for a viral post, for a viral video, for viral content. Number two, interest. Number three, surprise. Okay. And now we're pretty much evolved because you can build your own package. Do you want to build a package with 20% of hate, but also 40% of love, plus 30% uh, of surprise? You can do it. We, we can calculate what, what the impact is going to be according to the audience as well. Because, for instance, think of uh, posts that go viral talking about politics. Okay, for sure, there's not only the funny component, right? There's some hate, uh, there's some polemics, uh, okay, when you build that kind of package. But if you know how to blend 
the package, okay, you can go really viral and go big. Okay, and this is this, this is really happened. All of these really started to be professional level in this situation here when Barack Obama f was first elected as U.S. president. Because I don't now it looks normal again. Things that look normal now didn't look normal at the time. Do you recognize who this guy is? Okay, Barack Obama. Well, Barack Obama. I, I don't know if you ever noted, but Barack Obama is black. <laughs> <laughs> it's black. <laughs> this is the US. It's black. <laughs> Plus, uh, second name is Obama. <laughs> Classic American. Obama. Osama bin Laden. At the same time, Obama. So it's black with you know, this strange ancestors, whatever. And so, you know, nobody has doubts when Mitt Romney arrives. Can, can you see Mitt Romney? It's beautiful. Doesn't he look like the classic American? <laughs> That's the classic American. Good looking. With an American name. Mitt Romney. Yes, 2012. Nobody has doubts. Nobody has doubts. Because these are the proportions of the polls. Okay. This one, actually. This is a, a false start. Okay. The green one is Mitt Romney. The blue one is Obama. But then... For the first time in big history, okay, the media team behind Obama starts to play big. It's a huge use case, okay? We, we could talk weeks about what, whatever happened here, okay? And eventually, the power of the social media, eventually, can you see what happened? Eventually me, made uh, Obama win. It's not Obama who won the election. It's Obama plus his social media team that won the election. That's the big difference. And this thing changed everything onwards, okay? Because now what happens in the media is that people monitor what's happening because you can launch news that go viral, okay? And you have to be careful because if it's a bad news about you that goes viral, you have to counteract, okay? These are images taken from analysis that are done real time, even today, every minute, monitoring, carefully monitoring. This is a more recent example from industry, okay? Industry campaign where you can, you know, put doubts on other competitors' products, and so on, okay? And you really need to act fast, because what, whatever happens if you act too late is that we are terrible. We are very poor at doing one simple thing, erasing information. Erasing information is super difficult for us. It's much easier to learn something new, but to erase something, okay, it's terrible. And that's the, the source of the fake news. Okay, fake news uh, prosper, you know, they're very uh, powerful because of this effect here. If you manage to go viral, it, even if you counteract and say, oh, look, it wasn't true, it's too late, because we won't delete, okay? <laughs> and the same happens in all the other contests, okay? You are branding your, uh, uh, your destination, your blog, whatever you're doing, with some specific target, the moment you rebrand, People are not going to forget. It's much easier. It's not like you rebrand, you know. Uh, I'm doing uh, uh, photo shoots uh, in Africa, and then I rebrand, you know, and I do marriages only, whatever, okay? But people will remember. It's very difficult to rebrand because of this effect, okay? So you, you have to be very careful when you decide to go and follow a certain route, okay? And then going on and on in the tango, 2000, and I think something new happens again. This new small app appears, TikTok, and again history repeats. Okay, the experts say oh, this, is, this, this is just you know the most stupid phone application that you can ever have. It, it, it's really yeah, I'm quoting. Okay, it, it will never be successful. There's already Facebook. You have everything in Facebook. You have text. You can have images. Okay, and, and this new thing here appears: short videos, you know, where you don't really have control. Okay, now it's been powered up, okay, you can put roses, whatever you want, but the essence has stayed, okay. TikTok arrives, okay, and again, it wins. It wins by far. The same of what happened between Facebook and, and Google happens years later between TikTok, okay, and Facebook. So why does this happen, okay? And, uh, well, because of this, this is the simplistic view of TikTok, okay? Like, oh yeah, because there's, uh, there's all these sexual innuendos uh, going on TikTok, uh, 
Okay, well, we can measure all this, okay? This is perfectly measurable. We can tell you with good precision what is going to happen if you're wearing a bikini or not, okay? We, we can do very fine tuning. But this is not actually the key to TikTok, not at all. The real key of the success of TikTok, but initially didn't have any of this content. Eh? TikTok version one, first years, didn't have this kind of content here. Still, it was super successful because of this cost reduction. Okay, it's how we work. And again, I'm simplifying, but we can measure this. But great and good thing is, but we can measure all this. The interface of TikTok, it's just, if you ever try to, to install it, well, you just start, run and go. You see a video, see another video, see another video. Even without knowing how it's working, whatever complex commands you can have, it, it just goes and flows. Think of the complexity of a Facebook interface for a, new, for a newcomer, but even for people who use it. But we can measure, but you, we can think about it intuitively. No, you go, there's a page, there's the feed, you scroll down the feed, you can interact, put a like, you reply, you look at the video. Think of all this complexity versus you just stay there and you have videos. Another video, another video, another video. And you see what, what this is, it's great cost reduction. And we love cost reduction, okay? It's one of the basic principles that make us behave the way we do. We, we tend to reduce cost, okay? And there are actually very good reasons why we do it, okay? But we don't have time right now, but think, think of this situation too. Do you remember a few years ago, television is dead because of a new media. So nobody will ever watch television because you have interaction, you have YouTube. Do you see television as dead? But everybody is there, still sitting on their couches. Potato couches are still there and existing because it's the same thing. Nobody, quote me, in 10, 20 years, television will be there, still there because the cost uh, benefit proportion here is huge. Okay, what, what's the cost of sitting on your own couch and just watching television? Think about it, it's zero. Because we are visual beings, okay? The cost of processing videos is almost zero for us. Because our life is a video. Okay, we can measure this, but it's clear. No? Our life is a video, so it's, it's clear that we are perfectly opti optimized for the video. And that's where it goes. Okay, nobody will ever dethrone televisions, long, long life, the television. And since we're talking about television, let's think also of remote command. Okay, remotes. We talk, remotes are fascinating objects. Think of your remote. Do you really know your remote? <laughs> think of how many keys does it have. Can you, could, could you spell the keys of your remote right now? No, probably, you know, you, you remember that there's a volume up, volume down. No. A, plus one program, minus one. But there are numeric keys and the on off. That's it. No, probably. And maybe you, you remember one, one or two more keys, but so, okay, so it's, it's a complex object, but we don't use it. We don't use this complexity because we tend to minimize cost. Maybe there's, there are many useful functions that a remote could do quicker, but we don't care because our main driver is to minimize the, the, the operational cost. It goes so crazily, and we can measure this. It's been done. Crazy if you think about it, okay? But it's because we're minimizing the next immediate level. What's the most economic action that I can do right now? It's just to press plus one. It's not to think, okay, it's channel 23, so I need to press two and three, okay. Obviously, if the difference is too much, okay, then we finally realize, okay, but okay, it's, it's a great example of cost minimization, okay? The same thing for Keyboards in our remote, okay. We, 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 every day, every moment, we interact with our phones. And have you ever thought that the possibility that maybe this keyboard doesn't work so well? Because this is the same than a physical keyboard that we have on our computers, right? And actually, this is completely wrong. On a mobile phone, this is very inefficient as a keyboard. Even the alphabetic keyboard, you know, A, B, C, D, works better on our phone. So we could all write uh, okay, a lot faster changing keyboards, but we don't do it. Why we don't do it? Because there's a cost involved. Okay, the moment you switch keyboard, okay, even if eventually in the long term, 
the cost will go down because we can overwrite better and better, okay? We don't care about long-term planning because our main driver is short-time energy minimization. Okay, so this is a focus example of, uh, of what we could do. Home management, we don't have time, but I'm here all day, so hit me, okay, if we want to talk about uh, home management. But we, we can go from toilet papers to fashion shows, okay? Uh, Eva Fustenberg, with Sergey Brin, when they started to launch the Google Glasses. Do you remember the Google Glasses? The next big thing in the world. They had to revolutionize everything. Again, cost-benefit. Mm. The thing you could do, cool things that you can and could do with a, Google, with a pair of Google Glasses, are overpowered by, by, by the cost of use of this technology. There was no doubt by the real experts, not the hype experts, that this was a failure. Okay. And can you see that history repeats? Uh, Meta and the metaverse. The metaverse is going to be the greatest new thing, Mark Zuckerberg and the loud Trump has said. Okay, and again, it's just the cost benefits, and it's exactly you know similar to this. Okay, so big uh, uh, messed up. Okay, X uh, versus uh, threads. You know, new, new technology comes like threads. Okay, so sh should I point? To threads or stay to Twitter? Okay, well, just do cost analysis. For instance, the big difference of threads is that it's doubling the size of messages that you can write. So people will be able to express themselves better and double the cost of the people who read this. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's as simple as that. So it's a total no, no. Okay, so. And no wonder the thread, you know, started with the hype, like the Google Glasses, and now it's, you know, uh, it's going down. And the same you can compare Twitter versus the other, but all, all these microblogging things, it's going down. It's losing users because it's costly. People need to read. Read. <laughs> and maybe write also. <laughs> can you imagine? Okay, so just, just don't be, you know, uh, taken away by the hype. Here you can see the hype on threads. So oh, there is one million users in just, you know, the quickest. This is just hype. You need to focus on the real things. And by the way, m most of these users were bots, by the way, okay, so you don't have to do this. So it's, and it's the same with ChatGPT and all the great uh, AI application that we have seen this morning, okay. You, you can use it and it's great, okay, but you need to be able to use it in the best way. Are you going to generate content? Great, but remember, cost minimization. The moment you have your website, okay, I had a website example going live, but we don't have time. You have your tourist destination, blogging, website, whatever it is. Think of this, the user comes in two, three minutes, does he or she get a meaningful answer or it needs to go on and on and on reading and reading and processing costly, okay? If the answer is no, your website, your effort, whatever, is going badly compared to what it could be. So, use this technology, very great technology, time saving, but you, like any tool, you need to use it in the proper ways, all these kind of technologies, okay? To show you the, the, the final level of details that we can have the moment we actually focus on data, people, society. We, we talked about tango, no? the tango between technology and society, but tangos can be different here, okay? Because, well, it's a different and various world. Males and females, okay, and you you know that there are these viral images on the web, it's like a mocking with the difference between men and women, you know. So this is one of the various images that go on and on and on, okay. So the way we think is different, okay. And but the interesting thing is, but every time I show this to male people, they tell me, oh, sex is underestimated here, okay, but uh, anyway, so but this is just, you know, people laughing, it's a for good laugh, uh, actually, no, okay, porn for women, this is a book, it's a book, my famous photographer, Susan Anderson, porn for women, okay, <laughs> breakfast is on the table, I'll have your outfit ready in five minutes, porn, <laughs> Okay, I like to get to these things before I have to be asked. <laughs> Man, remember, this is real porn. Okay, so it's okay, we, we are different, but the cool thing is that we can measure this. We can measure this, and all these kind of pseudo, you know, uh, jokes uh, that, that go 
on the internet, they have uh, some truth because we can actually measure this. Okay, just a quick thing. IKEA launched, uh, I'll be super quick. IKEA launched uh, uh, a chatbot, okay, called Anna. Here you can see Anna, but very successful bot. But few people know that this is Anna version, version, version two of IKEA. Because version one was this one, the one on, on your left, Blonde Anna. And Blonde Anna, for some reason, instigated sexual talks by the men involved. <laughs> and, I'm, and I feel, you know, I, I feel like, so sorry women, we, we are, you know, we, we are, I don't know what, what we have, so they, they had to change the avatar of the chatbot, okay, because a blonde one was, was said, so there are differences that you can exploit when you do marketing campaign, when you prepare your destination or your target, your information, your uh, website, okay? For instance, women are superior in reading. This is classics, okay? So text is fine if you have a female audience. If you have a man audience or if you have a mixed audience, beware, we don't like to read. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> On the other hand, we have a better short memory, which means if you build a website, uh, a tourist website, for instance, okay. and you have many competing pages, a man is going to more quickly navigate into your website, okay? Women are slower, okay? Because women remember in the long term. So if you have a message instead, okay, but after two hours, no man will actually remember it, okay? But if you have a key message to conceal, okay, to, to give, women will remember it. So you have, you have to know the interplay. Because it's two different kind of people, okay? We love special objects. Do you want to fascinate men? Give them a three-dimensional object. That's why men love cars, by the way. We love cars because they move, they are 3D objects, and also the wheels. We are fascinated by the wheels because they're three-dimensional objects that move quickly. Okay, okay. So, and that's why we love football, by the way. Mm. We love football because there's a ball. And now you know that when the saying that was the dogs are men's best friend, men's best friends, not women's best friends. Okay, so that's, that's why, you know, men love uh, the ball. I'll, I'll just finish up. Also, the way you, you use signs, touristic signs, for instance. Okay, these are a couple of touristic signs that I took a picture here, nearby, just to come in here to the hotel. Okay, this is completely wrong. These kind of signs are completely wrong, both for men and for women. They have a lot of text, good for women, okay? But it's complex text because it's too much. So women will tend to forget it very quickly. Men, it's too much text, but they will maybe try to understand better. But what, what is actually happening is that we behave different. This is the best way. This is the best way to see, to put icons or even better, to put uh, three-dimensional objects uh, like this. And people, both men and women, will actually enjoy navigating this kind of site. Because we are all different and we need to know how to better exploit this in tourism and for all the other technologies of our lives. So we don't really have time, as I told you, but I hope you maybe get got a grasp of how to tango. And they need to, to understand that it's two actors, technology and society, and not just techno-fodder technology alone. Thank you very much. Thank you.